black stripe. And just bring all this out. Practice and make sure that you are hitting the center of the cue ball and following through straight. And you actually have a red dot to shoot at. And when you, after you shoot, this is amazing. You can see the chalk mark right on the red dot. And it helps you to determine how, how, how close you are to the center of the ball. Now trust me, it's not as easy as you think to hit the perfect center of the ball. It takes practice, it really does. Yeah. All right, another fun drill, and we'll just use a normal cue ball for this one. And again, you can do this two ways. Again, it's to evaluate your stroke. But the first one, we'll just use the table across with ones. And I just want you to practice shooting at the diamond and see how close the cue ball will come back to your cue. It's also a great way to practice seeing if your cue tip is going straight to it and you follow it. Yeah, if you see any English on the ball, that will be very helpful for you. And you'll be surprised, even from that distance, it's not near as easy as you think. Because a lot of times, if you're just a little bit off, you'll miss. This is also a great way to... Okay, and then when you get tired of that, you can always try it this way. And let me tell you a little story about this. The six-time World Super Champion, Steve Davis, he would practice this on a 12-foot table 45 minutes a day when he was winning World Championships, just to make sure his stroke was on. But again, you see the, the middle diamond, draw that line all the way back, use all your fundamentals. And remember, you want your chin and your eyes right over the shaft. And again, that's probably one of the most key fundamentals that you learn in this class, is that when you aim a shot, you always do it from up above, with enough distance from the cue ball so you have a good sighting. And then when you're ready, you've got your aim point all locked in, you throw the line back, you fall, fall into the shot and you step forward. And if it's not right, if it's off, get up and adjust. Get up and adjust until you're perfect. And you might want to practice this one too, just hitting it all the way down the table. Like that. And that's really hard. That, uh, if you're just, you know, my, my chrometer is off, it's going to be set up the right. So a good way to practice your stroke. The other thing, and this is that if you are having problems with your follow through, I've already demonstrated this, but this is so cool. I really want you to use this if you like. Just anybody grab it and try it out if you like. But you'll notice that the cue ball goes right on the reinforcer here. And you can see two red lines where you do the warm up stroke to stay on the line. And you can put the ball right on the end here and line it up to any pocket. But the way I'd like you to use this which would be very beneficial, is you practice your stroke. In other words, before you actually shoot, just use an imaginary ball, your warm-up stroke, and practice stroking through. And you want to be careful if it's going one way or the other or coming up in the air. This is really a helpful tool. This is what I was using when I was giving lessons this week. So you want to just shoot those shots until every time your cue stick is, at least gets to the six and it's right on the dotted line. In other words, I won't spend a lot of time on that, but I encourage you to try that. Alright, any questions so far? Just a comment on the stroke yeah. that, that Richie was mentioning earlier too. You know, you want to play, but if your stroke, if your stick isn't straight when you finish your stroke, that's why you're going to miss a lot of shots. Because you're either squirting the ball off to the one side, you're putting English on the cue ball, which makes the object ball go in the other direction. Because if you don't have a stroke, 
It's not going to work. Yeah, it's not going to work. Yeah, go ahead, Jan. Richie showed me a really nice exercise on that on Sunday where you line up a series of balls and then shoot at the diamonds at different angles as well. And that I wasn't doing the point where it came back to my cue, but you could tell they literally would go in line because you were shooting at the yeah. pocket. So I found that to be very helpful as far as holding up. Yeah, there are a lot of really good drills, and we've got a lot of great experts around here that can help you out. Uh, we're going to learn a, a drill that we haven't covered in this class so far. It's called the L drill. I'll, I'll show you that in a minute. But let me just finish with a stroke a little more. Again, one of the big factors that I see, you know, when I watch a lot of players play, is they, they often. Uh, not realize the importance of how to get power in the book. And to me, it's, it's, it's a real simple thing when you want to use more power. Just for example, let's say if I have a real long shot like this, and I have to hit it with power to make the cue ball stop. Whenever you need to get more power, you have a longer bridge and you have more stroke. The pendulum swings back further goes further through the world. And that's really important because that way your stroke stays uh, rhythmic and smooth. And you see a lot of people do this when they want to get power. They really, you know, they try to force it or hit it with their muscles yeah. and slap it. But when you want to get power in the shot, you'll notice you'll, the way to do that yeah, is to take some nice warm-up strokes that are rehearsing an actual shot. I have a little bit longer bridge. More follow. And by the same token, if I have a little shot like this, watch my warm-up strokes on this. My backstroke was this far, my forestroke was right like this. Okay. Now I have, uh, what I'd like you to do today as far as drills, I've set up two cut shots here. And what I'd like you to do is one of the drills is practice the stop shot, the draw, and the follow. And just notice where the cue ball goes. You know, that's a really good drill to kind of learn the cue ball. I know we did that last week, but I'd like you to continue on that. So just uh, as a quick review, if I hit a rolling ball with a follow stroke, it comes right over to this side, doesn't it? Now if I hit a stop shot, any, any guesses? Where's the, where's the cue ball going to hit? On the second diamond. And this, this drill gets you, gives you an opportunity to practice everything. You can practice your stroke, you can practice your alignment, you can practice uh, you know, pocketing the balls. And, you know, especially with the draw stroke, this is probably one of the hardest strokes in pool. You can see how you really can change the tangent line. The tangent line is here, which comes back about here. But with the draw, you should be able to see the way back here. So you can see rolling ball to here, stop shot to here, draw to here. You know, quite a big difference. So that's why I always tell you, you don't have to use too much English. You don't need as much English as you think. Now see how the draw changed the tangent line so drastically? Yeah. All right, now the L drill. This is in you can follow along in your handout. Some of you might remember this, but the neat thing about the L drill is that it's good for a beginner, but it's also good for a professional player because you can you can make it very basic or you can make it very challenging. But what I like to start out is just using these diamonds and 
three balls like this. And what I want you to do on the first part is literally take ball in hand on each shot. And the way, I, the way I'd like you to do it is first start out making a middle ball using a stop shot and applying all your fun runs. Stay down to the ball at the back of the pocket. Make sure you follow through the straight. You work with your partner. Then take ball in hand and you get to practice a cut shot going in the direction. And again, remember that when I cut the one to the left, the professional side is over here, the amateur side is over there. So you want to make sure to cut this one enough. All your fundamentals, draw the line back, chin, swing down, nice warm-up strokes. Stay down. Say you can take ball in hand again. Just practice that. Take ball in hand in each shot. When you feel pretty good about that, the next part of the drill. Is to uh, take ball in hand and then you have to play position for each ball. In other words, I'll shoot the 10 first, then the 9, then the 5. I'll go around the horn like that. And you'll want to get to practice a lot of the things we learned in the class. You have to get some of them low, some high, some stop shots. Generally, just a rolling ball in the first one. Like that. Now, all I have to do is hit another rolling ball. <laughs> okay. Well, you get the idea. Yes. Yeah. So there's really no, you don't want the ball in hand on that. You want the ball to re recoil and yeah. shoot from the back, from the coil of the shot? Well, it depends on the angle you get. I, that's a good question, Jan. Like on this shot, ideally, I want to set up the first shot so I get the cue ball on this side so when I make the nine, I can shoot the five. In other words, you're actually playing position for each ball. So I go from the three. And this is better because now I have a better angle. And then I'll play the nine. Like that. And just practice running these three balls. You'd be surprised you know, how, how much that will help you. It'll, it'll help you learn how to control the cue ball as well. All right, for the more advanced player, another way to use this drill is you make them in rotation. In other words, I have the one, five, and seven, so I want to play the one first, get the right angle on the five, and then play the seven. So if I want to do this the easiest way, I probably want to get the ball about right there. So I'll hit a nice rolling ball. Like that. Now if I make the five, the cue ball will naturally come to that side. Yeah, just practice that. It's another good drill. Now, uh, a lot of you don't really need to worry about this, but if you wanted to go into the next level of this drill, I would move it out just a little bit. Like that. And literally do the same thing. I'd start out with ball in hand and make each ball. You know, I'd have nice practice on some thin cuts. I'd move the ball back a little bit, so it like that. And I'd start, I could start out with any shot I wanted to, but the main thing was that you get ball in hand when you first start out. So you, so you, you practice the same shots over and over again, so it's kind of fun. Anyway, uh, I encourage you to to work on this drill today, or, or if you know of other drills, that, that would be fine as well. Any questions on that? Now, I, I think pretty much you should just stay with the three balls. And if you really want to challenge with the three balls, make them in rotation. Play position for the next ball. Okay. All right. Uh, Let's see, let's do just a few combination shots. How, how many of you are interested in learning combinations? Good time, huh? All right, all right. Let me, uh, can I get everybody to 
No, everybody, most people are here. Can I get most of you to come over to this end? Sure. Yeah. That way uh, you can see the shots a little better. And Richie knows these real well, but there's a lot of mysteries. Mysteries and combinations. Okay, the first thing I want to point out about combinations is a lot of times two balls are frozen, especially on an eight ball or straight ball. And you absolutely have to know what happens when you hit one side or the other of your hair. Now, if you walk up to a shot like this on an eight ball, and you get all excited, oh, I've got a dead combination to the right and center. You know, maybe you want to get positioned, you know, some part of the table. But watch what can happen, even on a shot that's dead in the center of the pocket. Mm -hmm. Did you see it in this by like two inches? Okay. Even a shot like this requires a pretty straight on hit in order to make it. Like you'll see, if I hit too far to either side, what will happen, like I hit that one on the left side, it made the 15 ball turn from left to right and threw the 12 to the right of the line. call that a tour shot. So when the balls are frozen, if you don't, if you hit them off center on either side, it will throw the object ball to one side. Yeah. So if, uh, yeah. if the center of the balls go that way, the track goes that way. So if you, if you hit the ball here and it missed on that side, because the center of the ball went that way. So if you are tilted close and you look at it, it's like, wow, right at the edge of the pocket, if the center goes this way, you can start to understand what's going to happen. If the center of the ball goes that way, you know what's going to drag that way. And sometimes you can take a straight one and miss it. Sometimes you can take a crooked one and fix it by knowing which way the balls are going to go. Exactly. And that's, that's kind of the next step here to learn, is that if you have one that's cockeyed, let's take the, what you have stripes in the game of eight ball, you notice the 12 ball is aimed way over to the right of the pocket there. I didn't know that was coming next time. Oh, no, 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 that's good. I can't get the ball to, sometimes you gotta tap them. All right. Now Terry can see that perfectly. Where's the where's the object? Terry can't see. Oh. <laughs> All right. All right. Now what I want to what I want you to understand on this shot is that to make it, uh, all you have to do is hit the right side of the 15 ball. And again, as, as uh, Richie was pointing out, as I hit that ball, it'll actually make the 15 ball turn like gears, like that. So it'll cause the 12 ball to go to the left. And it's always the opposite. If you hit the right side of a frozen combination like this, it goes to the left. If you hit the left side of a frozen ball, it goes to the right. You just watch, uh, you can actually see the 12 twist a little bit if I go right, right side. Almost missed it. That was quite a bit of throw. And the thing to remember too is that if you've got a greater distance from the pocket, that ball will throw a little further. This time I'll move the balls a little further back. And I'll aim them to the left side. No, that's the pocket. That's where I'm at right now. All right, that's pretty good. Now, what side of the 15 ball should I hit now? The left side. Yes, absolutely. And you can even watch from behind. And again, you notice I'm not hitting it too hard. The harder you hit it, the less that throw action will occur. Like if I pound it, it will go through. Go ahead, they're frozen. But guess what? It still works if there's a little space. If there's like an eighth to a quarter of an inch, you'll still get some help. Here's an example. The 11 and the 15 have about, that's almost a quarter of an inch. So watch the 11. I can still make it turn to the right. Here's what happens in April a lot. You get something like this. 
you'll have your balls frozen together like this. And let's say you have stripes. Now in this particular shot, I can't hit that ball because that would be a foul because I have the stripes. But what I can do on this shot, since the 15 ball is aimed a little bit to the right of the pocket, all I have to do is hit the 14 to the right side of the 6. And it'll throw the fit. So the 14 ball will be just like the cue ball was on the previous shot. So it'll hit this side of the ball and throw the 15. These are fun shots, and you know you can set them up all over the table and kind of get a feel for them. But all I have to do here is hit the 14 into the right side of the six. Let's see how far it's through. Uh, anyway, have some fun with that. Try them out. You know, uh, Richie and uh, Brad and Brad will be coming around helping us. We have to hit the center of the cue ball to do that. Yes. Because if you know, that's good. Yeah. Change everything. Spin it on the cue ball to do The center of the cue ball is always your friend. Uh, you know, I even, I even watch a lot of these you know, YouTube videos of all these great players in the world. And everybody thinks they can do all this fancy English. And they can do that when they need to. But, you know, like Willie Moscone says, 80% of your shots are pretty much in the same. All right. Uh, let's do just a real quick thing on eight ball and then I'll get you out there. How many of you actually know the rules of eight ball? Okay. You already know them. You still Now, you can help, help each other out on this because the last class we'll be doing a, a tournament. So real quick, when you rack the balls, the eight ball goes in the middle, and the only other requirement is that on the back wings you have to have a solid strike. Yeah, Right. Strike on one side, solid on the other. And again, when you rack the balls in eight ball, you rack your own now in most tournaments. Because a lot of, a lot of people you know, have a tendency to maybe rack them loose, and then it hits like a, a bowl of mashed potatoes and makes it buzz some. You really have to have them tight. So the way to rack is to use your fingers in the back of the rack and kind of turn them forward like I'm doing here. That way they'll, they'll stay tight together. That's not bad. All right, on the actual break, a lot of people uh, used to break into the second ball because in, in previous times if you made the eight on, on the break you would win the game. But that's no longer true. On the break now, if you make the eight, it literally just spots and you can keep shooting. Need to reposition the two ball Oh it came off? Yes it did. Must be your table. Some tables are a lot harder to rack than others. In fact, in the old days, they used to have people get in all kinds of arguments in tournaments. You know, you, you bad rack me or whatever. <laughs> in fact, uh, they kind of corrected that now because people rack their own, which makes it a lot less uh, controversial. Now, on the break, Obviously, you want to make a much uh, more longer stroke because you want to generate as much power as possible. Also, get a good follow through. Like, if you watch some of the really good players, they follow through as a be almost a foot or more sometimes. And we're not going to get into the part about using your body and jumping in the air and all that, but literally, you want to make sure that you have a nice long backstroke and a full follow through. Hit the head ball as solid as you can. If you want the cue ball to pop out somewhere in the middle of the table, if you hit it off center, you're going to scratch and uh, all kinds of bad things can happen. And I usually put it a little off center like this. It's a nice warm up stroke. So you've got to be really accurate. 
That's a beautiful break. Uh, actually, it wasn't bad, but the cue ball got kicked and yeah. got almost scratched. But literally, and nothing went in. So, uh, if I would have made a ball, let's just say that I made the third cue ball. On my first shot, I would be able to, it would still be an open table. I wouldn't have to worry about taking strikes. Because you, you don't establish a group until you make the first called shot. The first called shot establishes your group. And the interesting thing is that on the very first shot, it's an open table. It's the only time in the game where I can actually use a solid to make a strike. But once I've made the 14 ball on this combination here, then I would have strikes. From that point on, I must make a legal shot on a strike, otherwise it's a foul. Do you always have to call what you're doing? Yes, but it's a gentleman's call. It means that if the shot is obvious, you don't need to call it. <laughs> All right? And, and that's pretty true in league. Some people are sticklers, but generally, uh, yeah. if it's an obvious shot, you know, it's, people just don't worry about it. If you need call, you do need to call. Now, if it's a combination or a bank or something like that, you absolutely have to call. Okay. Hey, Pete. Yeah. And uh, etiquette really matters. Yes. Uh, when you do something on a table, how you play, how you act, uh, all that really matters. So if you're calling the 14 ball into the corner, and then it goes, loops it, misses, and it bangs into this corner, you know, yeah. I meant that, and then you go on, then sometimes that happens. It really matters. Yeah. Did, you, did you play honest? Did you stay honest? Did you you yeah. call? Yeah, I meant to do that. And then they're like, oh, yeah. If he yeah. said he meant to do it, he meant to do it, because he's, he's, he's a real honest, nice, plain guy. That brings up a real good point. If I called the 14 over there and I missed it and it came back here and then rolled all the way back and went in this pocket, it's still good. Yes. Because you're just calling the ball in the pocket only. I don't care how it gets in there, it still counts. And then from that point on, you basically uh, uh, have to, uh, you know, if I made that stripe, now I would have the stripes. And from that point on, I would have to make a legal shot. I could no longer use a solid to make a strike. Yeah. Oh, I'm just holding it up. Oh, I got the <laughs> face of your She had surgery on her head. <laughs> OK. But a couple it's probably of, throbbing. A couple, couple of things I want you to remember, like, for example, if I was shooting the 10 from here, and let's say I did this, I called the 10 here. No go. Flip the 5. Ball in hand, the ball in hand, an eight ball, modern BCA international rules, is anywhere on the table. If I was scratched on the break, my opponent could be the ball anywhere on the table. Is it on the break? Yes. I thought it was behind the kicks. Well, it used to be, that was okay. years ago. They, they want to punish people for scratching on the break. Gotcha. But you know what? A lot of times you scratch on the break, it's pure luck because the ball gets kicked in by me. Okay. Yeah. Oh, really? Is that how it works? Uh, some leagues play on different house rules. Uh, some tournaments play in different house rules. There's uh, tournaments around town where they sort of mix half ball in hand and half old time, like regular eight ball rules. Yeah. Where if you scratch on an eight ball, or if you foul on an eight ball, you lose. Uh, in the in the league play, if you foul on an eight ball but you didn't make it, it's just a foul. Right. Yeah, and I guess the last thing I want to cover is how you lose the game. All right. Go ahead. I up just a little because I can't hear very well. Uh, ball in hand. What, that means you've got to that you means you're, it someplace. Let's say your opponent uh, just scratched. Okay. All right. Ball in hand anywhere. Okay, That's, so no longer back there. No longer back there. Okay. Another way that can happen is just how I demonstrate. Let's say I have the stripes established and I clip a, a five ball first. Same, that's a foul. Ball in hand anywhere. And this is the way we'll play on, on week number six when we have our chip tournament. And again, that's purely a fun thing. But we will, we will have prizes and things like that and we'll, we'll have a good time. All right, quickly, how do you lose the game in April? Maybe, you know, Scratch on the eight ball. All right. 
this would be a loss. Let's say all the solids are down. And I'm shooting the air. Let's say I, I decide to hit a lot of follow. Okay, that would be a loss making the eight ball. That's right. But on the other hand, this is something that you may not be used to. There are other ways that you can stay in the game. So let's say that you did this. Uh, yeah, here we go. Let's say I'm, I've got the eight ball and I call it a corner and I do this. I missed the eight and scratch. That's no longer lots of game. That my opponent would just simply hit ball at the end if you didn't shoot. But if you make the eight in the wrong pocket or you make it before you finish shooting the group of balls, that's also a loss of game. It's also a loss of game. If, like if you made the eight ball early before you you know, made all your stripes, accidentally you bumped into it and knocked it okay. That's all I want to cover today. We'll do a little more on equal next week. But yeah, go ahead. I'll take that out. Will you give us a glossary of terms or a, oh, a website? I'll give you a website. In fact, I, can, I remember it because I go in there a lot. It's called playbca.com. And I'll, maybe I'll write it on next week's uh, lesson. PlayBCA.com, they have the rules right at the website. Yeah. And they're really, really involved. There's you know, all kinds of more rules than you'll ever want to read. I know that's how many terms for Yeah, they have, I think they have a glossary in that yeah. website too. Yeah. And again, raise your hand and ask anytime I say something like that. Yeah, it helps you. Anyway, uh, let's have, go ahead and grab a partner and start playing. I think every one of us has a whole table today. Oh, we do. All right. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> so you're going to have some work out there. All right. Okay. Oh, well. Uh, well, this is where I go down. Oh, okay. All right, Catherine. Oh, yeah. Yeah, if you're going home, are you going to hang out for a little bit longer? Okay, uh, here. We all have our own tape this week.